hi everyone welcome back so today we are going to talk about how to change the duration of a unit hydrograph and the method that we are going to use is called s hydrograph method so let's get started so the first question you may ask is why we need to change the duration of unit hydrograph okay so let's say we have a unit hydrograph corresponding to a certain duration delta t so this is my unit hydrograph and it's a delta t unit hydrograph okay so q t you can only use this unit hydrograph if your excess rainfall pulses have delta t duration or delta t time step so in this case we have delta t for this excess rainfall pe so as long as this delta t is same as this delta t you can use this unit hydrograph if this delta t is different let's say instead of delta t we have x times delta t then you cannot use this unit hydrograph okay so that's the limitation of the unit hydrograph theory that when you have a unit hydrograph of certain duration you can only use it if each rainfall pulse has a time step that is equal to the duration of unit hydrograph so the idea behind all this is that the unit hydrograph assumes that the rainfall lasted for that certain duration okay and we all know how the duration affects the unit hydrograph shape for example let's say you have a rainfall that lasts for one hour so the intensity of this is one inch per hour and then that will produce a unit hydrograph of this shape let's say now if the rainfall lasted for two hours then the intensity is going to be half of that right so let's say this is our two hour excess rainfall so the intensity in this case will be 0.5 inch per hour so what that will do is it will create a different hydrograph which will have smaller peak and longer time to base or longer base time okay so this is our one hour unit hydrograph and this is our two hour unit hydrograph so you can see depending on the duration of excess rainfall we do get a different unit hydrograph that's why a unit hydrograph that you have for one duration you cannot use it for rainfall that has a different time step than the duration of your unit hydrograph so that's why we need to have a methodology to convert a unit hydrograph of one duration into a different duration that's one way to do it the other way is to just create unit hydrographs of different duration that may not be possible uh, if if you have limited data so since this is one of the limitation of this unit hydrograph theory but because the unit hydrograph theory follows the linear systems theory that linear systems theory gives us more tools or tools that we can use to convert a unit hydrograph of one duration to another duration so let's see how that can be done i'm going to draw rainfall and hydrograph on the same plot here so i will not name the axis this is just for demonstration so let's say i'm drawing a 
rainfall of one inch per hour that lasts for let's say one hour in this case okay so this is our rainfall pulse and this will create a unit hydrograph let's say this is our unit hydrograph let's for now let's say this is u1 u2 u3 u4 u5 okay now <clears throat> what i'm going to do is i'm going to plot this unit hydrograph in a different way for the same rainfall so i'll just use the same rainfall here so this is one inch per hour that's the max we can reach now instead of plotting this unit hydrograph the way it is plotted here in blue i'm going to plot the volume of the unit hydrograph and plot the cumulative values of that volume so and i'll show you what that means okay so so instead of u1 u2 u3 like you see here so what we have here is u1 times delta t or in this case delta t is one hour okay this is u1 plus u2 times delta t and so on so the final value that you see here is summation of all u's time delta t which should be equal to one inch so all you all i have done here is i have plotted the volume of the unit hydrograph that you see here i'm going to highlight that so what i have done here is i have plotted this volume on this plot okay so instead of individual u1 u2 u3 u4 u5 I just converted u1, u2, u3, u4, u5 into volume and I plotted the cumulative value of that volume and I got this curve, the one that I plotted here in blue and this is called the S hydrograph. Okay, so let's say this is the base time for this and even though this is not to the scale so after that base time this will reach a value of one here okay so this is how you can convert your unit hydrograph into a s hydrograph now this s hydrograph physically doesn't have any meaning so this comes from again the linear systems theory and I will explain few things about that linear systems theory and how we can use this S hydrograph concept to convert a unit hydrograph from one duration to another duration. So now you know what S hydrograph is. So S hydrograph is basically a plot of cumulative volume of all the unit hydrograph ordinates. Okay. Now let's briefly talk about the linear systems concepts that are used here so in linear systems concepts this type of input is called pulse input pulse input so what that pulse input means is it starts at certain value from zero it reaches that certain value and it continues for certain duration and then it comes back to zero so this red highlighted area is pulse input in linear systems theory in hydrology that's just our excess rainfall or rainfall pulse okay in linear systems theory 
I will just use green color here now. A unit hydrograph is a pulse response function. In hydrology, we call the pulse response function as unit hydrograph. Okay. And the S hydrograph that you see here, that is a step response function. And the step response function is a result of a step input. So let me explain what a step input is now. So remember, again, coming back to this red pulse input, it started, it reached a value of one, it continued for a period of delta t, and then it came back to zero, okay? So that is a pulse input, a step input, it starts from zero, it goes to a certain value, so let's say in this case it goes to one, it continues, now, in case of pulse input, this will come down to zero again here, but the, a step input in, in linear system will not come down. It will just continue indefinitely. Okay, so this was our pulse input here. This type of input is called step input. Okay, whenever you have an input that looks like this, which is a step in this case, the output that you get from that, so even um, initially it will start like how the unit hydrograph will start or any hydrograph will start. It will, and at some point, the input and output are equal. So this is the step input, this is a step, response in unit hydrograph or in linear system. In unit hydrograph or in hydrology, we call this S hydrograph. Okay, so let's call this step input as I, or I'm just going to call this as I1. Okay. And let's call the step response or S hydrograph as S1. Okay. So a step input starts from zero, reaches a certain value, in this case one, because we are talking about unit hydrograph, so we will stop at one. And then that step input continues indefinitely. A result or output from that input will look something like what you see here in blue and we are calling this as step response or S hydrograph and I'm naming it as S1. Now let's assume that there is another step input. I'm going to use orange color and let's say this starts after delta t and let's assume this delta t is same as this delta t that we have used before in this, okay? And that step input will again start, maybe this orange color is not distinct, let me try pink. So it reaches a certain value, in this case one, and then it continues again indefinitely, okay? So let's call this pink input as I2. So we have two step inputs, I1 and I2. Now as a result of this input I2, we are going to get another step response. So let me use a different color, a green. And this will be similar to what we have for S. S1, it will just start, it will start after delta t, okay? So this I'm going to call S2, okay? Now, if you do I1 minus I2, I1 minus I2 will give you this pulse, 
right? Because here they are both equal. So this is zero. If you subtract I1 minus I2, you will get this pulse that I'm highlighting with this green hatched area. And this green hatched area is similar or identical to what we have here in red, okay? So you can subtract two step inputs and you will get a pulse input. If that is true, so I'm just going to call this our pulse input. If you subtract step input I2 from step input I1, you get a pulse input, which is this rainfall here. If that is true, then if I subtract S2 from S1, then I should get my unit hydrograph. So if I do S1 minus S2, minus S2 will give me this hatched area, or let's say I'm going to hatch that by pink color. I get this area here. And if you try to plot the value between these two lines, you actually get this unit hydrograph. Okay, so S1 minus S2 will give unit hydrograph. Unit hydrograph of delta T duration. Okay, so this is the basis of how you can convert, how to convert. We haven't converted anything yet, but what I showed you here is that you can use this concept of step input to create a unit hydrograph and the duration of that unit hydrograph depends on how apart I1 and I2 are on this time axis. So in this case, I plotted I2 exactly after delta T, which matches with what delta T I had before. And the difference between the responses from I1 and I2, which is S1 and S2, gave me this unit hydrograph. Now, instead of, instead of separating I1 and I2 by delta T, if I had separated them by delta 2, then the unit hydrograph that I will get will be of this duration, okay? So that's how you can convert a unit hydrograph of one duration into another duration. So this is the theory behind this. Now let's see how this can be used and then we will do an assignment. So steps in converting. So before I move that, remember S hydrograph. So S hydrograph is just accumulation of all the unit hydrograph volume. That's the main thing I want you to remember. And to convert or to create a unit hydrograph from S hydrograph of a certain duration, all you have to do is lag. So this term moving the input by a certain time, we call it lag. So to create a unit hydrograph of any duration, you just lag the S hydrograph with that duration and then you convert the volume into discharge. Okay, so let's see how that can be done. Now let's say we have a unit hydrograph, so given given unit hydrograph of T1 duration. Okay, now let's just, so for T1 duration, we have U1, U2, U3, U4, or U4, U5. So this is what is given to us. So I'll just plot this like here. So this is U1, U2, U3, U4, U5. Okay, so this is unit hydrograph of T1 duration. Okay, 
and we are asked to find unit hydrograph of T2 duration and in this case T2 has to be greater than T1 okay and that's something again the limitation of this so T1 T2 has to be some positive multiple of T1 okay or multiple of T1 um, so that's our problem we need to find a unit hydrograph of a different duration so to do that step one create S hydrograph or let's say S1 hydrograph corresponding to to U1 okay or corresponding to unit hydrograph of T1 how do we do that so to do that all you have to do is you accumulate your u1 u2 u3 u4 u5 so this is how you do it i'm just going to plot it here and then i'll show you how we got that so this is our s1 so how do you get s1 i'm just going to write one two three four five and after five it should be horizontal here so this was u1 times t1 okay this value here is u1 plus u2 times t1 this value here is u1 plus u2 plus u3 times t1 this value here is u1 plus u2 plus u3 plus u4 times t1 and the final value at which this will become equal to 1 will be all u's time t1 okay so in our case we are given five values so that's what i have done here so this is your first step you just create a s hydrograph corresponding to your unit hydrograph okay step two step two is lag s1 by t2 okay so what i will do now is i will just lag our s hydrograph or s1 by t2 and then start the same s1 that i have here like this and the reason the reason this is called s hydrograph actually the shape of this curve should look like a s you may have seen um, cumulative probability distribution they do look like s so you can see i'm not drawing my s hydrograph with a perfect shape but you get the idea so all i have done here is i have shifted my s1 by delta 2 okay so that's all i have done here and step three maybe just use same color is subtract s2 from s1 so before i do that we forgot to name so i lagged s1 by t2 and we are going to call that new s hydrograph as s2 so the blue s hydrograph that you see here we named it s1 the red lagged hydrograph we are going to name it as s2 so step three is going to be s1 minus s2 okay so once you do s1 minus s2 you get this area okay and if you plot the values of this area at each point and you divide it by time 
what you get is a unit hydrograph of this new duration and that will be our final step so step four divide s1 minus s2 by t2 to get unit hydrograph of t2 duration okay so these are the steps in converting a unit hydrograph of one duration into another duration so i just explained you the steps here i'm going to just zoom out a little bit if you want to write these steps or take a screenshot i will that should be enough so given unit hydrograph of t1 duration find unit hydrograph of t2 duration and t2 is multiple of t1 so there are four steps and if you follow these steps you get a unit hydrograph of any duration you want so in this video i covered all the theory behind this and now we are going to do an assignment in our next video where you will see how this can be done with actual numbers so i hope you were able to follow the s hydrograph method to convert unit hydrograph of one duration into another and with that i will stop here and if you have any questions as always feel free to email me and i will see you soon in my next video thank you and bye